It is Thursday's football show. Nathan with you this evening. We've got a busy weekend coming up in the Premier League. We've full live coverage of Manchester United against Southampton from 2 o'clock on Sunday. Brian Kerr and Stephen Doyle will talk you through that one. And then myself and Cunning- Kenny Cunningham will bring you through Newcastle against Wolves from half past four. John, the lads will be here on Sunday, on Saturday to reflect on everything that's been going on. But right now, I'm delighted to be joined once again in studio by John Giles. How are you? I'm good, Nathan. Thank you. Uh, a lot has gone on, I think it's fair to say, since you were in seven days ago. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot at one particular place. Well, that's uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, Liverpool 7, Manchester United nil. Yeah. Yeah. What well, the hell happened? Uh, well, nobody could foresee that, uh, as we know, Nathan. But... I think what you find in, well, what I found anyway, playing, if you're in a bad spell, and I've seen teams in bad spells, and like in Liverpool having a bad time, well, Manchester United come along. Right? Manchester United are going very, very well mm. at the moment. It's a very glamorous match. And it, and what I found, I'll just go off the thing a little bit now, what I found with football, you're always nervous before a match. Everybody's nervous before the match, and you wouldn't be the same if you if you weren't nervous. But when you were playing a lesser team for or somebody that was considered to be a lesser team, it was very uh, easy to switch off to say, "I'm not as nervous today." And the opposite happens. And I'm not going back to Liverpool's case. Like they haven't been having a good time, but they're playing Manchester United, who've been going well. They're playing at home. This is a huge, big match, mm. right? Now, now you're nervous, right? You're ready for it. You have to do it because the fear is in matches like that. If we get a hiding here, it's going to be terrible. So now you're playing the way you should be playing. That's my take on it, right? And you get, in Liverpool's case, I mean, I had for the last three, four months even, they've they're gone in midfield. Mm. They're too old. They're not able to do it. Well, they weren't gone the, gone, gone the other day. They're three or four months older than they were when people people were saying that. I think with Liverpool, it's it's an attitude situation. You think they've been complacent, complacent, or whatever way you want to do it. Mm. I mean, they've gone to, to Brighton and places like that, right? And everybody said, "Oh," but then they go to Manchester United, been having a really big spell and kill them, not just beat them, actually kill them. We're back to the Liverpool that we've we've been accustomed to for the last four, four or five years. And the main thing with Liverpool was go, 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 out and go. And I think the main thing that's happened to them, we haven't seen that. So you're conceding goals, people are not doing their stuff, all the various things that lead to losing matches. Now, it happened to Manchester United. Got a, they, they got a big surprise. And, uh, and they were awful. Because they might be in a situation think we're going really well here. We mightn't have to be up as much as we usually are. I don't know. But it's very hard to explain the, the, the hiding they got against Liverpool at this particular time. It, from a Liverpool point of view, it, it does seem to raise as many questions as answers as to how they're able to deliver that sort of performance. And when people have been looking at them and analysing them over the past few months, it's been brought up about fatigue from last season where mm. they played every single match, 63 games, mm. won two cups, Champions League final, right to the final day, and that there's a, a long tail hangover to that, that yeah. six months on, that the likes of Henderson and Fabinho, that the legs just aren't there. Yeah. Is it possible that this is just, as you say, one huge game, Manchester United, the fear that was in them, yeah. they were able to raise it for one game, but actually they needed to invest last summer, they needed fresh legs in midfield, and that there's every possibility that Henderson and Fabinho won't be able to get to that level again this weekend well, against Bournemouth. Well, if he puts on the same attitude as he did, as, mm. as you say there, Nathan, it was attitude the other day with Liverpool. So you don't think it's a physical thing that suddenly they were able to perform No, I think like it's that. more mental, Nathan. Definitely. It's more, it's more a mental situation. Especially when you've had the season Liverpool had last year. They, well, they won two trophies and they were there and thereabouts. And what happens then, the close season comes along very, very, very quickly. Very quickly. And it's very difficult. Uh, I mean, I experienced a little bit at Leeds when at one or two seasons we were off the thing, haven't got back, haven't won the cup or whatever it was the previous league. And it's a state of mind. Right? Everything, well, everything is a state of mind. But is it one of those things, and I know you often talk about morale, how it can just be gone like that, is it one of those things that quite often you don't even realise it's happening? Because it's hard to look at Jordan Henderson and think that he's let his standards drop just because they played every game last season. But he definitely hasn't been able to get to the level he's been at over the last few seasons. Yeah, but he did on the weekend. Mm. So you can't just turn it on. It has to be there. 
you know what I mean, Nathan? You, you, like it, the seasons go by very quickly. You're doing great. Then there's close seasons, only six weeks, seven weeks go very quick. But but you're a professional footballer. You have to now get back the pre-season training and put as much into it, if not more into it, to get going again. I mean, we, we had, I had an experience at Leeds when we when we when Sunderland beat us in the cup. I don't know if you remember that. Mm. Yeah, Sunderland second division team shock being the cup. Oh, then we got unbelievable stick in the paper, especially me and Bremner. Especially, when I was I think the oldest player in, in in the in the team at that time, and we were gone. We were finished. We were gone. And coming that. up in fifty years, is it? Hmm? Coming up in fifty years, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. Well, I still remember it well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something like that. You don't you, do. for, you don't forget. You get into a cup final. You, you're playing a second division team, and they beat you. Now, there's two things could have happened there. We could have gone, right? But Don Don was very clever in that in that situation. And we were all every season we played a lot of matches, Nathan. Every season, sixty seven because we were involved in competitions. And Don said we were all we were in bits. Don was crying at the do after a little do we had afterwards. Right. Oh would that have been unusual? Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't very think unusual. he'd be the type who'd be showing too much emotion. Well he couldn't help himself. Yeah. You know, we were beaten by that. So And was was that upset or was that embarrassment? Both. Both. But he, then after the couple of days, he got over it. He had a meeting with the lads. And we, we were a good set of lads. None of us turned on each other. We did it. Bremen and I got more more stick than anybody. And because we were the oldest, we were finished, we were gone. and on the you, you take that. You have to take that. But then Don got us together. Right? And usually what happens in that situation, Joe, Joe Bloggs blames, blames Jim Bloggs and that. that. Mm. With the Lisa, it didn't happen. It didn't happen. We took it together. And then Don had a meeting after a couple of days and he said, right. So the two ways you can handle it, you can go or you can come back. He says, right, we've lost the match, finished. Next season, you're going to have a rest now, it's next season, and we're going to go for the league unbeaten. No pressure. No pressure. But we went with it. He didn't say, what were you doing? We didn't say, what, what were you... To each other, this is the worst part. Mm. You know, what's he doing? He's not... You're not doing that. that, that. It was none of that. We took it all together. Humil- humiliated, totally humiliated. But we were determined to start the next season. We didn't go unbeaten in the season. We went 29 matches unbeaten to go on and win it, mm. right? So that's how you have to react. Terrible stuff, beaten by a second division team, cuff and everybody writing you off and that. You, you come back on it. You have to come back. So the, the close season is getting shorter and shorter, as, as we know. Now, it, Liverpool it would, it would be difficult for Liverpool having do, had the season they've had, late season, then they're coming back early on. It's 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 human to say, oh, but when you're a professional footballer, night, you have to put that behind you. Like you're young, fit guys. I know Henderson's not as young as he was. But look, I'm running around the other day. Come back in the close season, you do it again, and you mm. get going again. You look at the great players all the time. I played with. But Bobby, look out, Bobby Charlton was 38 or so when he, when he finished playing. And he ran around as, mu- as much as anybody else. So it's a state of mind. Everything is a state of mind. Yeah. But when it comes to football, the state of mind is exaggerated because it's so dramatic in what can happen. right? And Liverpool went back to what they could. But everybody was saying to Henderson and these guys, they're finished, they can't do it. They didn't do it. But they did it on... It was because it was well, a big game, day, yeah. and, and 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 they absolutely embarrassed Manchester United. Now I didn't I didn't like the manager's response, Ten Hag, in in, in what he said, because what he said initially was that the uh, uh, the the um, plan didn't work in the second half. Yeah, but that's rubbish, Nathan. You know, the plan. What what's the plan? You know, when you're playing a game of football, okay, you want the defenders, to, but. No matter what happens, if the defenders are not defending the way they should be defending, that's not a plan. That's not a plan gone wrong. That's mm. the players not doing their job and the whole team not doing their job. So there's no great, in my experience of football, there's no great plan out there. The plan is that you use the ball, you work hard, you score as many goals as you can. When you haven't got the ball, everybody has to work hard to get it back. They're the two bases in football. So plans, you can say, well, we're playing three at the back, we're playing two at the back and all that. But that's only a, a, a false so, sort of situation. You still, If you're playing two at the back or three at the back or four or five, you have to defend properly. Manchester United didn't defend properly. Did they give up? I thought they gave up. Yeah, because... It, like have you, you seen... Th- it, it felt... 
It, it, would, it wouldn't be a conscious. Unusual. It wouldn't be a conscious giving up. Mm. You know what I mean? It was just that Liverpool picked it up, and they they have been going well in recent times. Manchester they didn't expect it, right? And one of the big things that I can't understand, uh, again from the manager's uh, Manchester United manager's point of view, I mean it's been known for all this season this time that Alexander doesn't defend well. Mm. We know, all know that. Everybody knows that he's brilliant going forward, but he doesn't defend well. United is no left winger. Yeah, Bruno Fernandez out there. He's, he's not left winger. So there's, there's he's, a, he's a midfield player, and that's where he played in in, in that position. He wasn't. A, he's not. I've never seen him in a match where you get it on the left wing. And he's beating the fullback. Yeah, that's a left winger. Didn't have a left winger. So there's, there's probably two different things to analyse from a United point of view. Obviously, the capitulation in the second half, but in the first half, considering the form that they have been in, the form that Rashford has been in, and as you say, for Alexander Arnold, it's been a season of real. Struggle. He arguably had his best game last Sunday. Was able to <laughs> well, he was free. attack at will, he's got, and he's brilliant at it. Why do you think Ten Hag did that? Well, I w- to be honest, I wouldn't have played Rashford on the left wing. Rashford's not a left winger, mm. right? He can play there, but he's not. A, he's not a guy that gets on the ball and starts beating players. I mean, United have two or three wingers, at least two or three wingers who are genuine wingers. Do so you think he should have played Garnacho or Sancho oh, or somebody yeah, like you that? You have to start with two wingers against Liverpool. You have to. You know, I, I I just don't understand that at all. But but that's that's looking at it in a, in a, a, a difficult way. Mm. You know, and 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 again, the comments is afterwards the, the, the lads stopped doing the plan or whatever the plan was supposed to be. I mean, to be honest, this is nonsense, uh, Nathan. In my opinion, I mean, what you've got to do is put it right. What what do you look at it and on? Is there first of all, when you, you have to pay the pick 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 the the best team available yeah. to you. I don't think you did that. Right. Then during the match, United weren't up for it in a way that Liverpool have been up for it uh, over the years, apart from this year. That mm. proves that they can do it now. If they want to do it, they can do it. Right? In Manchester United's case, they have been going reasonably well in the last few weeks. There's no doubt they picked up. But to pick a team without a left winger against Liverpool, I just don't understand. And then to say, well, we, 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 they didn't work the plan in the second half. Just defended badly. They had a bad day. They had a bad day. Really bad day. Now they've got to pick up. But a bad day is is three nil. Yeah, exactly. Four nil. Yeah. How how does it, uh, whose responsibility is it at three nil to stop it there? Keane was talking about this after the match that some days you go downfield, you know it's not your day. Mm. You're getting beaten three nil. You go home. You move on. You try and get over it. Yeah. Is it the manager's responsibility or the players on the pitch well, to just settle it there so it doesn't become the embarrassment? Yeah. Well, of the game? It, ultimately it's the players who are on the pitch. Mm. But but. But again, it goes back to the manager. The manager sets the mood and, and he sets... Like, the great managers, this is what they do, Nathan. Now, they set the mood. If you go 2 now and you, you keep going, you go, you go even better. And that. This didn't happen with Manchester United. I don't think the manager did a good job on the day. Uh, uh, he, he's backed... I see he's backed Fernandes totally this mm. morning. In it. I mean, Fernandes was, was dreadful. And, and in my opinion, I, I, I'm not a fan of his... I think he's a really, really talented guy, but when it comes to certain things, Nathan, like on on Saturday it was terrible. He was holding his face, but if you watch every match, he's up up the referees at the referees always moaning about some him and Fred particularly. You know, instead of getting on with the game, you have to do that now and again with the referee. Mm. But it's it's I've seen Fernandez last year when the other manager was there, and I don't think he tried a leg for the manager. He's got to get, and he's captain. He's got to be an inspiration, and then good. But but see, things happen so quickly in a match. You don't have time to readjust to it. You know what I mean? You're saying you get to three nil, Nathan. Mm. You no, know? well, they didn't stop it at three nil, man, uh, because they, they got worse as the game as the game went on. Which is a lot, a lot of times that's a lot of players giving up on it. Uh, they can't believe it's happening because Liverpool were supposed to be what they were supposed to be, and Liverpool became what they genuinely are, in my opinion, and and could go on from there. But then you'd have to ask the question of Liverpool. Where's Liverpool, it been for the last six months? What's been happening there? You know, they know Manchester United is, is a glamorous game, it's a big game, Manchester United could do them, and all that. Now they're playing. But that's Liverpool know, mm. and Klopp knows. They've been very successful over the years, of being Liverpool week in, week out, week, it, uh, uh, all the time. You That's on him though, is it not? As manager, is that not his job to identify 
if there is an issue last summer where either fatigue has crept in and they just can't do it as consistently or mentally something has gone that he gets reinforcements in midfield like they prioritise other areas of the pitch they prioritise bringing in Nunez well, bringing in Gakpo yeah, well the, the, the manager's always responsible because he's the one that's there right but it's very difficult to be responsible if the team are being beaten by Brighton and that then it comes to Manchester United and you see the Liverpool team of the past you don't know what's happened. I don't know what's happened there. Could it be Salah's wages in relation to, to the other players? You don't know. We don't know. And and he might not know. You know the Liverpool players have been together for what now? Five, six, yeah. seven years. That can become... So well, the message gets a bit repetitive from the manager. Exactly. Nobody knows. We're only guessing. Yeah, yeah. But what? But the great thing about football, the great thing about sports, but football is, as we follow it, is that whatever's going wrong manifests itself with the performances on the pitch. That's that's the, there's something gone wrong. Like if, if they can be beaten by three matches by Brighton and these 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 players, do you know what I mean? The players haven't got that much older. Mm. You know, nobody gets that old that that quickly, and then can play against Manchester United doesn't happen so the fact is that there's something has gone wrong from previous years but we don't know what it is but now when but I do know with, 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 with playing in, in a team uh, that's not doing it every week will turn up some weeks especially in the glamour matches so there are two sides almost and you can flip it from the Manchester United point of view as to how they respond from this how much of a one off definitely this was for Manchester United like is is it when you lose 7 nil and the last 15 20 minutes go the way they went and some of the individual performances like does that show you that there's a problem in Manchester United that we haven't seen so far this season that actually we have, we not have as to, far along we as have we thought they were we have seen it a lot mm. at the start of the season some really bad performance in Manchester United especially when Ronaldo was there and when you were beaten 4 nil at Brentford and, yeah. and that was on bad but it's funny I don't think it's any coincidence that Manchester United picked it up since Ronaldo's gone, you can't have a dressing room with a Ronaldo when mm. he behaving the way he did. So he got when he got rid of Ronaldo. If you look back at the results, they started picking up from there to get a real team. Now, what happened on 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 Saturday can happen. Yeah, might be just bad day. Everybody off. Well, he described it as unprofessional. Ten Hag. Yeah, well, I, I, unprofessional can cover a lot of, of sins. Yeah, you know what I mean. If you're saying it's unprofessional. Well, if it's unprofessional at the moment, he has to take responsibility for that. He's mm. the manager. Why Why are they un, unprofessional going into Liverpool? It's not as if you're not getting a warning going to Liverpool, despite the fact they're not doing what they do in previous... You know it's a ga- no game. You look at the players they have, the brilliant players that haven't been doing it. But you, if you, you, And you can't go into any game, regardless of uh, what they've been doing, in relation to what you want to be doing yourself. You know? Like, the, the opposition can't you stop you doing certain things like running back and chasing back and getting stuck in they can't stop you from doing that and that's what you're supposed to be doing of course you, the word for it is unprofessional right mm. but you have to say well why is it unprofessional why do you, have, why do you when are you going to Manchester United right or going to Liverpool there's always a big match anyway right you, you can't be unprofessional and unprofessional means you're doing things that you shouldn't be doing or you're, you're not doing things that I want you to do that's, that's it, like it's it's one of those lines that it almost feels like the biggest insult in football is to be called unprofessional because you say it's do it's yeah, not he, it's he, refusing to do the basics. Yeah, well, that's what he'd be saying mm. about his players. It was unprofessional, right? And it was. But then you'd have to ask the question: Well, you're the manager. Mm. Why should it be unprofessional? In other words, he can't say it's unprofessional. I'm out of it now. He's the manager. He's the manager. Would you have seen many unprofessional performances when you were playing? When I played yeah. myself? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Would there have been days for Leeds where it went badly wrong where you'd look around and go, players just didn't try? You wouldn't say they didn't try. Well, we went to League Cup to, uh, years ago. Years ago. And we played Arsenal on the Saturday. And we beat them. I think it was 1-0, 2 nil. And then we played West Ham on the Monday night. 7 nil. they beat us yeah 7 nil. now I don't think we were up for it the way we should have been up for it on that night and but what's it like when you're on the pitch and you're 7 nil down dreadful 
dreadful. You know, you know, as a pro, this is terrible. This is no good. And you have to learn from it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. That was a one-off for us. And then we're back again. And so it's what was, you've, you mentioned earlier a brilliant piece of management from Don Revy of not overreacting, of you know being very emotional after the defeat to Sunderland, but getting you in two days later, refocusing the minds. Yeah, after that, that, was seven, nice, that was mostly for the next season. Yeah, but after was, a 7-0 defeat like that against West Ham. Well, it was... It, it, because the pressure on Eric Ten Hag is he needs to react. Bruno Fernandes can never captain the club again. Yeah. He, you know, there needs to be an overhaul that shows how far they're behind. Yeah, well, in, in his case, it, like... He's only recovered recently. Mm. Like it, it, in the Leeds position, we 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 lost one match, but the next match we were up for it. And we got gone. We got gone again. All I'm saying is that it can it can happen, in any but but then you you go again. You have to go again. But the the, the real professional clubs, obviously, it's match after match after match after match, Nathan. Because years ago we played in the league, say for them, it's forty two games, and I think we were beaten beaten twice in it, right? It wouldn't have been one of the most attractive teams, but mm. it was everybody was in together. We were going no matter who we played, no matter who we played, and we had some bad ones. Beaten in the cup final by a second division team, we were knocked out by in, in another cup cup year by a third division team. It can happen, even even if your attitude is right, it can happen. That's football, right? But it, what, it, what, you wouldn't be beaten like in Manchester United's case, seven nil, you know. That's that's really serious. Mm. How did it, how did this happen? In the, and from Liverpool's point of view, you'd have to say, where have they been? You know, if they can turn it on like they turned it on and, and and do it do it brilliantly and score goals and all all the various things. I mean, they've been beaten by some of the lower teams this this, yeah. this particular year. But it sounds what you're saying. It doesn't sound as though you'd be surprised if United were to bounce back quite quickly and win a few games in a row and that actually Liverpool might go back to their old struggles as well. Well, it, it could happen. Yeah. It, it, it's something to keep an eye on. Like, if we're talking another f- five or six weeks, Nathan, because it's going to work itself out. They're all going to play to play different matches mm. and say, what what was that match, really? Was that Liverpool coming back? You know, are they going to do, do Real Madrid in the Champions League? Then, then you'd say, well, something happened. It did happen. The other way with Man U, say, well, they recovered from that. It was a kick up the backside but now they're back into it again I'd, 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 I'd be surprised if Manchester United didn't respond in a way that you would expect them to respond now we've got to watch Liverpool as well and say right talk about the midfield players talk about this and that and the other you just hammered Manchester United what are you going to do from now mm. or could it be a one off see that's how you used to get the shocks I, I the, 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 what's it called me in my day when a team un, unexpectedly won the underdogs are... The underdogs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, just a bit of an upset. Yeah. And because I used to say, well, you see the same team, like the beat us in the cup. I think the next three or four matches, five matches, they didn't win. Mm. They so got said, themselves well, so up for that one, they just couldn't yeah. match it. Said, so why aren't you doing it in your own league? You know, because yeah. players can raise themselves, Nathan. But it's very hard to maintain it. That's how le- winning the league was always considered the best one to win. In my day, it was 42 matches and I was 30. In other words, you have to be at your best. All the or, time. I say, all the time. And, it, and that's why, actually, uh, it's easy to say what might happen. But for Manchester United, it's perfect for Eric Ten Hag to get into his players. That When you look at the points total that's been needed to win the Premier League over the last few years, you can only afford to lose, generally, two or three very, games. Very few. That you can't afford matches like that. Yeah. You have to be at yeah. it all the time. And you uh, can see there's a good example of it there. Arsenal are a good example mm. of it now. They were beaten by, by Man City a couple of weeks ago. But the reaction has been brilliant. I don't know if you saw the match last yeah, week, yeah. they were two down, and they kept playing, kept playing and playing, which is great. But what, what, what they've got to be careful of is don't let that happen again. It's great to, to make the comeback, but you're better off winning 2-0 without Hoping having to make a comeback. Hoping there's an extra minute of injury time. Yeah, but but they've, they've, done, they've done it well, Arsenal. I think Arsenal have done well this, this, this season. It's very interesting about Revy. I never knew that, that that was his reaction to that oh, final yeah, defeat. He's a very emotional guy. He's a very emotional guy. He, okay. you know, he, he was... Uh, like he, he, it wasn't the first time I've seen him crying. Right, and was it always, was it always results based emotion? No, not always. Okay. No, no. Um, no, but obviously he cared so much as well. Like he, he, he was. It's uh, like any hum- the humiliation with um, Sunderland was bad. Mm. The second division team, Nathan, and they weren't. 
they weren't they weren't promoted. Yeah, you know what I mean. They were second division team. Like Seventy three, the cup final is the biggest game of the year. Oh, by by a long way. But what was great from from Don and and the rest of the players, uh, like life goes on. Yeah, right. Twelve months later, Sunderland was still in the second division. You win the league, and we won the league. You know, so you, it's it's a downer, and it was a downer because again the papers, the press always pick on. Uh, I was the oldest player in the team at that particular time. Yeah. I, was, I was only thirty-two, but I was a player, and Billy was was he was a bit younger than me, but we were picked out as finished. You know, that's that's the way it goes. But then it gives you a star. Well, that's what I was going to say. So yeah. Revy talks to the team, but for you, oh, getting all that stick after the cup final. Yeah, but but, but you get used to the press. Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? You, if, if you, you ignore it if you're the hero of the match, as well, because yeah. you know as a pro, that's not going to make any difference for the for, for the next match. But but it gave instead of knocking leads down, it gave us a determination to stick together and go, and that was done. Mainly, like Don, Don could have said, "Pick on me or Billy or someone else. You're finished. You let me down. You let me down badly." And we all. Oh, could, would he have ever done that? Hmm? Would he have done that? He didn't do that. Yeah. Would he? Would he have ever done that? I never seen things? him do that. Okay. But what can happen as well, though, the players can turn. Well, I was going to say because you would often talk about yourself, and Jack would have a debate. Oh, we would, we would have a debate, and, and and more than a debate. Is a defeat like that then just you're and just Jack wasn't playing. Jack he wasn't was gone playing. by then. But are you all just so shell shocked in that dressing room? That's yeah. We were good. No we we, we were good lads. Nobody blamed anybody. Right. You know what I mean? Like we had Norman Hunter as a team with Paul Rini and Terry Cooper. We we were very respectful of each other and knew it was nobody's we couldn't name anybody. There was right. nobody not trying. There was nobody giving goals away. Do you know what I mean? It was a bad day, a really bad day, but we had to stick with it. And the time goes by very quickly, Nathan. Twelve months later, we win the league. Sunderland still in the second division. But it hurts. You get a loser's medal. You have to go up, every cup. You have to go up, don't you, and collect your lo- loser's medal yeah. before they get it. I've got three of them. <laughs> You're I've, got two, I've got two winners, though. Yeah, as well. uh, do, you, do you have the losers' medals? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Because it takes a lot to get to a cup final. You know, like you have to win a lot of matches yeah. to get there. So back, uh, I'd imagine in '73 it wasn't uh, as it is now, where they just take the medal off straight away throw it into the crowd they don't want to no, see it no that's, I think that's totally totally disrespectful it's totally disrespectful to the opposition it's totally disrespectful to the club generally you, you just have to suck it up right? as they say you have to suck it up and we, we, we had to do a fair bit of sucking up at Leeds because <laughs> we were runners up quite a few times Yeah, but we won quite a lot as well we were there every year so it was Liverpool beat us in the first, our first cup final the great Liverpool team the first great Liverpool team mm. Uh, after extra time and it was our first year in the first division and it was remarkable second to the Manchester United so that was a great season but the year on it went down as Leeds as runners ups you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know uh, every time I'm out in the FAI headquarters there's a, a little section the John Giles section where a lot of your memorabilia is yeah, kept yeah he asked me to do it a few, year, uh, a few years ago What's, is, is there one piece of memorabilia one medal one jersey one thing that you do look at the odd time and you're particularly proud of yeah uh, I don't look at them, but there'll be, there'll be things you'd, you'd, you'd be proud of, you know, obviously. I mean, the, the, I, I won a medal with Manchester United just before, I, before my Busby kicked me out. <laughs> and that was, that was, like, the longer you go back, the more the, the FA Cup meant. Yeah. Right. But we did win it in 72, which is the centenary year mm. of the Cup final. Um, but you can't, you can't dwell on the losses. I think. Drive yourself mad. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, but in, in Leeds in Leeds case again I'd, I'd, I'd stick up for them. So they won the won league once, sorry twice, cup once, first cup twice, the league cup, and uh, you like, did all right. Six, yeah, yes, six or seven over a period over a period of time. You know, it wasn't for Jimmy Arfield, you would have had a European cup. Mm. That's another story. No, I we don't need to take a break. I, I don't know how we got to the you know? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's great that you still have it all as well because I know so many of your contemporaries unfortunately had to sell their medals. Oh, and that's, sell their that's, and that's that. another story. That's, yeah, dra- that's, that's dreadful. That's, uh, that's dreadful. That's the, but that's the way they, they had to do it. And a lot of lads got uh, a lot of stick for selling the medals. What, what could they do? You know, you can you look at your medals. It doesn't... Mm-hmm. Uh, doesn't put the food on the table, you know. No. Uh, Arthur's just pointing out the 63 Cup final was the first trophy Busby won post Munich. Yes. Was he emotional? 
Yes, he could. He could yeah. well under very, very difficult circumstances. I mean, after the Munich air disaster, he was very badly injured. Yeah. And uh, when he did come back, they went into the the old gym for uh, for for he was there obviously to see everybody and the staff and the players, and he broke down. Mm. A very emotional time. Uh, and then he, I mean, he did brilliantly. To, 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 like Matt Busby's one of the best managers ever. I mean, he won the cup in nineteen forty eight. And then he won the league with the same team in 1952. Then he created the Busby Babes. And he won the league two, two, twice or three times yeah. with them. Yeah, he didn't win the cup, but he got into the cup final. But that was a very young team. They were on their way in, in a big way, you know, before the Munich air disaster. And then goes and does it all again but in 63. Then he did it again, as you say, like I was lucky. I was, I was lucky I was in the team in 63, uh, which was the first time they won the cup after the, the uh, 1948. And then they went on again, won the European Cup. You know, like unbelievable. Unbelievable. One of the greats. He was one of the great managers of all time. Uh, there's a brilliant piece actually John did with us uh, last summer, I think it was at this stage, where we sort of did a deep dive onto Matt Busby and his brilliance. You can uh, listen back to the podcast. It's uh, with all our podcasts. Just search John Giles, Matt Busby. It'll come up for you. We need to take a quick break because there's plenty of other football that's happened this week that we want to talk about. All our football is brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sport and Premier Sports. Football on Off The Ball With Sky Watch every UEFA Champions League and Europa League match live on BT Sport this season This is News Talk Football on Off The Ball With Sky Watch every UEFA Champions League and Europa League match live on BT Sport this season This is News Talk Back John Giles is live in studio once again this week, so we've uh, spent a lot of time on Liverpool and Manchester United, but there was a lot of... And other, Leeds. And Leeds, <laughs> and Leeds as well, uh, as, as we do on a semi-regular basis. But I, I, I find I learn something new every single time that we talk about uh, that Leeds team. We should do a year-by-year year reflection, I think. One, sh- oh, one could, show per season. Go ten years on ten years on Don. Don was an unbelievably superstitious guy. I'll tell you a little story about Go superstition. I, I moved from Manchester United to... Leeds, obviously. So I went in to see him for the first time down at Leeds. And in those days, there wasn't so much money around. I had my boots and my paper paper bag in, and I was chatting away to him, you know. And uh, he said, out of the blue, he says, what's that there? I said, there's my boots. Get them off the table, quick. He was so superstitious, it was unbelievable. Weren't allowed to football boots on his table? No. And what what, what, what were his other superstitions? Hmm? What were his other superstitions? Oh, he used to, when we played at Liverpool... He used to have a walk down to one corner because the first time we we, we had to walk there, we beat Liverpool. So that was just all unbelievable things. Don't, don't do that. Don't. Could you slag him about it? I, you could joke about right. it, yeah, yeah. You, but you wouldn't be slagging him. You wouldn't be slagging him about it, you know. But, yeah, but he was unbelievably super... Because there was a, 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 a story going around for years that the, the, the gypsies were kicked off Elland Road, the, the, the ground. Right, so it was cursed. Yeah, and he got somebody in to take... The, <laughs> to take the course off. Well, look, I'm from Mayo, so I know all about curses. I can tell you with some <laughs> terrible things that happened back in 1951. Uh, you didn't? You, you, did he touch the "This is Anfield" sign? Like Vout Vey cursed at the weekend. I don't remember him the doing the worst that. possible thing you can do. It turns out if you're an opposition <laughs> player. Uh, so we will talk about Champions League in a minute. You mentioned you touched on Arsenal there, and yeah. uh, like every single week, the way they've responded. Yeah, and I, I won't say it was inevitable they were going to win that game because the game was was done uh, no you no, know, because they went two up after, mm. uh, 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 just after half time uh, so instead of being one up and you said you fancied them to, to, to pull back uh, and that's I think it's the second time they've done it in recent weeks I was thinking watching them about your line of if it's the right thing to do in the first minute it's the right thing to do in the last minute yeah. they were still doing it in the last exactly. minute they that's didn't it. panic at all there no, was no hoof no, it up to the no, big man kept playing. I think they did the same at Villa a couple of weeks ago which mm. is, it, they, you know, they kept going. It's a very difficult thing to do, Nathan. You know, especially with favourites like them. You're playing against a team, especially you go two up. Every, a lot of people get panicky and they start running forward and doing things, they do things they shouldn't be doing. So to keep it right, it, mean, he's, it goes down to the man. Definitely I was just going to say, it goes down to the, a lot of credit for Arteta. Yeah, keep keep playing, keep down, because he, he'd get onto them if they didn't. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, so it, it, it's, it's a great thing to have in the club. The only thing I'd say, and, and mine is a little bit, don't be going two behind. It's much easier. You know what I mean? That's two matches I've seen to go two, yeah. two behind. They're making up. life difficult. But you don't. Themselves. Yeah, you do make because it gets. If you keep doing that, somebody will have a bit of luck and not 
and they won't come out of it. But looking at them playing now, they're, they're, I think so far is because uh, remember City beat them a few weeks ago. You think well they could be on the way down after that, but they haven't. They've picked, they picked it up, got matches down the matches, coming back, which is the hardest thing to keep the head. And as you say, that was right even past injury time, and the lad got the shot in. Mm. So, but they kept at it. They kept at it. They kept at it. One of the other performances of the weekend that was probably overshadowed by everything that happened with Liverpool and Arsenal was Brighton's victory against West Ham. They beat them by four goals to nil. Evan Ferguson, young Irish striker, again was yeah. involved in a in a couple of the goals. Like everyone wondered after Graham Potter what would happen with Brighton. The quality of their attack and football from Matoma, yeah. McAllister after winning the World Cup it was as good as you get. Yeah, it's it's and, and that's only this season. Mm. If you look at all the previous seasons, I did it one time. If you had a list of the players they've sold consistently losing their best players it's incredible because normally when that happens you go into the second division you can't be selling mm. your best players all the time but as you say West Ham last week as if they hadn't sold anybody over the years these lads were brilliant and they have been brilliant in the matches that we've played very consistent you know years ago I would have said there's definitely second division after two or three years of doing what they're doing mm. selling your best players and bringing them and bringing players in there to win the matches for you it's brilliant I mean, Potter could do with a bit of that. At, <laughs> when he got well, he got a bit of it. He got a bit of it yeah, then. Yeah, so yeah. finally, he got a win and a couple of goals. It yeah. was it wasn't vintage Chelsea, but they created a lot of chances. Sterling was caught offside a few times. Yeah. There was a little bit he of controversy, it. but it, it yeah. did feel right from the start that there was yeah. a, a belief. There was no no sense watching the players had given up on them. No, no he's, 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 I, I think he's a really good lad. As, as long as he's, I think as long as he's allowed to manage the way they want to the manage, which is get the players in that he wants. I mean, it's very difficult for him at the moment. Nathan. There's about 28 players. And a lot of them are top class, or mm. considered top class players. And, and you can have too many of them. Players not even making the squad. Exactly. Now, the first thing with them, how do you, how do you train them? How do you, how do you do the dressing room? Well, think, that, that's you, been brought up as one of his issues at the moment, is he likes to have an 11 v 11 at training. <laughs> but he's got well, so, he can many have other, that. Yeah. so many other players then who aren't actually involved oh, not involved in it you know what I mean it's just incredible and when you get that in in, in, in my opinion in, in a club like there's an awful lot of lads not playing mm. and that's where you get the trouble from when, in, in any club I mean if, even if they've only got 16 players the, four, the four, three or four players that are not playing not, are not going to be in good humour about everything so the, the team spirit Situation is very difficult to create. It's difficult to maintain. But if you've got twenty-eight players, and most of them are big money players, or they're, they're, they're certainly first-team players, it's a very difficult situation for him. He'll have more more dissatisfied players than satisfied players in the squad. He's also helped by having some of his more important players back fit. So mm. Reese James. Ben Chilwell, the two fullbacks, yes. were yeah. very influential. I don't know if you've seen much of Enzo Fernandez in midfield. It was in there alongside Kovacic. Like they spent a, an enormous amount of money on him, but yeah, I like he him. seems the one who settled in very quickly. I like him. He's the best midfield player I've seen for a while. Right. Yeah. What's he doing? Uh, well, you've heard me always. You talk about positional sense in, yeah. in the game. It's certainly one of the most important things of the lot. Like I'm talking about midfield players now but everybody has to have position. The winger has to be in the right position, get wide at the right time and all that. But position, uh, sorry, midfield players, more so, because he's got a free role, right? And again, I keep going back to this thing, there's only one ball on the pitch, right? So there's sometimes, you have to, in that position, you have to read the game well, right? And if the ball's over here, you have to think, where can I get it, right? Because it's, it's, it, it's been able to know where the ball's going to be. How much of how much of that being a top class midfield player is dependent on the quality of the players alongside you? Uh, well, that has nothing to do with the players alongside you. You know what I'm saying? Because mm. you take it from where the ball is. Right? If the ball's on the right wing, for example, right, you know you can't get the next ball. But you can get the next ball after the next ball. That's what the top midfield players do. In other words, if you're stuck on the left-hand side of the pitch, the ball goes over the right-hand side of the pitch, or it goes to your right back. You're yeah. not going to get the first ball, but you have to be able to read, that ball's going to go there, there, so I get there. And generally speaking, you stay behind the ball, right? 
say the right back is on, he's going to hit the centre. He's not. He's not going to hit you. He's going to hit the centre forward. Now you've got to get in a position. Yeah, right. It's like the right back is on the ball. That was my job. Yeah. Please, right. Paul Rini's on the ball. I go over to Paul Rini. I'm not. I'm not getting it from him. You're giving him right. an option. Now the ball has to go somewhere. Mm. Right. So I see it going across the pitch. I'm. I'm. Nobody sees you. See, doing it. People are always watching the ball. But I'd be running across the pitch. I wasn't going to get that. Well, Terry Cooper get it. So as soon as Terry Cooper got it, I've got it. Because even the player that marking me, you see, this is what I used to find in football. When they'd be watching the ball, they wouldn't watch it. We wouldn't. I'd be over there. You're a step ahead. Before they knew where the ball was. They never follow you when, when you weren't going to get the ball. But you'd be getting the second ball. Play it up. Now, whatever it is after that, you have to be in the right position to do it. You have to see it. Do you know what I mean? So you you see Fernandez. I'm going to call it the I call it the John Giles or the Luka Modric awareness yes. of where he needs to be at the right time. Yes. If you keep an eye on him playing, you'll see him, and before you know it, he's drifted there, and the ball happens to come to you. So they think it happens to come to you, but it doesn't. It's like if you're the midfield player, like that, that midfield player. In well, my day, it'd be a ball, say, from Norman Hunter up to Mick Jones, right? Now, when the ball's in the air, you're on your way. You're anticipating where Nobody it's going to Nobody picks you up doing that. They don't even see you. It just so happens that you're getting the, the ball back. It was played out to Eddie Gray. You come in the, and most of the time, you, you come from a position behind, behind the ball. Like, if you watch all those players playing, you very seldom see them receiving the ball with their back to the goal not a good position because mm. now you have to get turned on it yeah. or somebody's going to give you a whack in it want to play with their head up yeah so th- the best thing you can do is play it out if it's played out to Eddie Gray before you know it you're there if you need well like I'd say to Eddie and Peter if you need me because you want them to take take them on but you'll all be receiving you see you're only looking one way then and while that's happening now you're having the ball you're looking somewhere else so you know what you're going to do with the ball before you get it a lot of the time, you know, because you're looking at it, you can see it, you have time to see it. But, but you have to, see, you have to know you have the control to do it. Mm. And going to, you're not worried. See, the less things you think about on the, on the pitch, right, so the more you can your do. Your first touch has to be spot on. Yeah, but you, but you don't even think about your first touch. Yeah. Because you take that for granted. Now, now, see, when you're on a football pitch, anybody, your mind can only think of one thing at a time. Mm. Can't think of two things at a time. So when you're playing football, if the ball comes to you, you've only got one, one thought. But you've seen the first thought. Not all the time, but when it comes back to you, you know, bang, 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 that, that's, that's on there. So you don't have to think too many times. Because you can't. That's why you get the positional players, the great midfield players like Pirlo and, and, and these guys. And it looks easy. Yeah, it is. They're receiving the ball, coming back to them. I still find it, and from talking to you every Thursday night, every time I watch Modric, I'm like, how does he constantly <laughs> end up in the right place every single he, time? He knows, but he knows where the second ball. Like he, he's not getting the first pass, so mm. in his head, I can't. I'm not getting the first pass now. Where's the second pass going to be? Right, and he's always coming up behind the ball because nobody can mark you. See, if if you're say in a position you're facing that way, and a fella comes to mark you tightly, right, and you're behind the ball. You nip away from him. He has to give you 20 yards, 15 mm. yards. Well, that's that's again, when you watch Modric, what he does so brilliantly, the little darting run, yeah, five just yards into space. See, the fella can't... If, if the fella's man marking you, and you're playing that way, Nathan, if he's coming marking you, right, and you're behind the ball, right, you just skip away from him. Now you're going for a goal. So his team have to say to him, don't let him do that. You have to stay goal side, right? So he's giving you 15 yards. You don't need 50. Yeah, you're in, you're very much in control of the situation yeah. then. Yeah. I do want to touch on Tottenham just before we wrap up because they would have loved to have seen a little bit of that fight that was there from Chelsea at Tottenham last night. Yeah. It's hard to remember a, an English team or any team going out of a close and tight Champions League tie in such a whimper as Tottenham did last night. They offered little or nothing. Yeah, I thought Milan were good. Mm. They didn't, uh, they didn't drop back, Nathan. You know what I mean? They, they had a little guy in the middle of the field too who was a good player. I can't think of his name. Tonelli. 
I think it was a good you now he got on the ball a lot he could beat players so see you find with players like that and teams like that and generally I find the home and away talk is totally over talked or over spoken it's a pitch you're a professional footballer now, then. you know you know the crowd what's the crowd so, uh, crowd is a sound Right, they can't come on the pick, pitch. At, well, they can, but they, and give you a box, but, they, <laughs> but they're not going to be allowed to Which do that. Which man did Andy Robertson in the Liverpool game come on to celebrate and that? Just yeah, take you him know out what of it. I mean, like it's 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 a crowd and the ball. But did you ever speak to uh, other players who didn't feel that way? So you were able to go on the pitch, and it didn't matter what was happening around you because you were so in the zone, you were so focused. <laughs> There must be players who are very affected by that. Like the stats back up, the teams have better home records than away records yeah, in general. Yeah, that, that, that is always a, a, a fact, mm. you know. Like, and, and, but, but if you do it properly, you see, Nathan, if you ignore the crowd, the only person that can hurt you is the referee, right? If you're playing at Anfield, and I'm not talking about myself, I'm sorry, a lot of players, you get the ball in the middle of the field, like an Eddie, and Eddie Gray's on the left wing, right? Nobody can stop me doing that unless one of their players. But that goes against everything that Gary Neville was saying on the commentary last week that this was Anfield and even the great Manchester United team felt that this was different. Well, that's nonsense. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if it came from Gary Neville anyway. He talks a lot. Of, but, but, uh, but, no, if you're reducing it to logic, mm. and it's, logic is everything. If I get the ball at Anfield in the middle of the centre circle, and this is when Tommy Smith played and all these guys, right? And Eddie Gray is on. If they're not close enough to me, Eddie Gray gets the ball. And what they used to say about the cop was, the cop, which was a big, as we know what it yeah. is, they blow the ball out of the goals. Never seen that in my life. <laughs> These are all myths that you keep, that create. Yeah, yeah. Like, away, like if you have the right mentality, playing away from home is a plus, right? Because if you're not playing so well, the crowd will never get on to you. Yeah. They're delighted if you're not playing well. The only problem you have a bit is the referee when their penalty decisions touch and go. They'll give it to the cop because they're shouting and they're, they're balling at it. But the actual ball, I mean, I know it, it sounds odd. If you get the ball, who, the player's going to take The crowd can't come on and take the ball. All the crowd can do is make noise in favour of the home team. So you felt the way AC set up they weren't coming to defend a lead no I thought they were good yeah I thought they dominated the first 15 I, I know I know when we've spoken about Tottenham before you've had some sympathy with Conte and the lack of investment yeah. in players surely they can still expect a little bit more than they offered last night with the likes of Kane Son yeah, like Richarlison's been coming well. out today they having a pop at the well manager the say, but they played well mm. they were a good team now they would have the mentality that I'm just trying to explain to you there Away from home, pitch is lovely, same pitch, same ball, same 18 yard line, they're all the same. Yeah. Away from home is, is, is a state of mind. We have to win because, or the referee, that, they're, just, they're at home, you know. But if you get enough players, they don't give a shit whether they're at home or not, we're going to get on the ball. That's what they, 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 I, I, when I was watching the match, I thought they'd score first. I thought we're better than. Uh, like Spurs are limited. Mm. He's limited to what he has. He's, he hasn't got the big money that Chelsea have. I mean, if he had the money, some of the players that they have at Chelsea is not going to get a game or have the, 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 the resources. Because the feeling today is that it's done for Conte. That's, I don't think the Tottenham supporters were maybe impressed with just his general demeanour on the sideline with the substitutions he made after the red card. That well, yeah, but it's, it's, Bring but, back Pochettino. But what... what uh, what substitutes does he have? Mm. I mean, if you look at uh, what he spent, for example, and I think he's done well with what he's, what he's spent. They've got good, solid players, but they don't have the big players. Nathan. When's the last time he spent 50 million? Well, for Charleston, I guess, is the, is well, the obvious he, one who yeah. hasn't scored a goal. No, I, don't know how he pay, I don't know if he paid that money, that money for him. Mm. I, don't think he's, I don't think he's particularly good. But if you look at Manchester United spending money, Manchester City spending money in relation uh, Chelsea spending what they're spending you know like Conte is nowhere near that like, and if you look at the team that's there and the team in his time he's definitely improved them. Mm. so finishing top four is you know, an achievement it, if they can get there I think it's incredible 
I think it's incredible. I mean, if you if you gave him the, the whatever the two hundred, three hundred million that that Chelsea, have, you'd have a different team. All day. He has, he just hasn't got it. Well, he's he's done that at Chelsea and he won the league with them. So yeah, I, know, <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I think well, he's but... I still think he's one of the greats. Okay. Uh, if he had the resources to do what needs to be done nowadays. John, it's been great to have you back in studio the last couple of weeks. Thanks, Nathan. Beware Dublin. He's heading out in the town. <laughs> <laughs> not like the good old days. A bit not, quieter. Not so much. A bit quieter. <laughs> uh, all our football coverage is brought to you by Sky. All the football you love in one place across Sky Sports, BT Sports and Premier Sports. Great stuff, John. Thanks, Nathan. Football on Off the Ball. With Sky. Watch every UEFA Champions League and Europa League match live on BT Sport this season. This is News Talk.